Good morning. Welcome to the Small Business Cheerleader Podcast. I'm Nicola Willis from NW Marketing and I'm joined by Jen McLinley. I knew I'd get that. And we're here to talk about copywriting and brand building. And I I love this topic because it's so important for small businesses in building their voice, but it's so hard to get started, isn't it, Jen? So introduce yourself and let us know why you love copywriting so much and helping small businesses build their brand. Yeah, thank you, Nicholas. Thanks for having me on your podcast too. Eventually we managed to get it together. Um, I managed to get it together. <laughs> it's all good. It's always worth the wait. So let's 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 hit it running. Tell us exactly what we should be doing with our copy. But firstly, introduce yourself and let us know why we should yeah. be talking copy. Yeah, so basically the power of words. I've just always loved how um, we can touch people um, and move people and affect people and make their lives better with words. Always since I was, um, well, I think, eight years old, writing stories in the back of my parents' car, um, like little comic book stories and creating characters and problems and, and things like that, you know. So always loved words. Um, and it's just um, a universal language that we all have, obviously, like the language of words. And it hangs around. It's forever. If you write something amazing, people can read it and reread it. Um, and I really believe in the power of well-assembled words, well-chosen words. Um, selected words for different types of people. Um, we need, you know, there's feminine words, masculine words, ugly words, sharp words, pointy words, soft words. And um, there's a whole lexicon behind all that. Um, always loved words. So I um, worked in broadcasting for a while, got to talk a lot, again, using words, write some scripts, um, conversation, love conversations with people. And I really love, love it when people have ideas um, of their own in terms of businesses like bringing their passion to life and I want to be like you like a cheerleader for them and really help them because I can see what's so amazing about their idea and by working with them to put it into words um because oftentimes being too close to your business you don't see you know number one what's so amazing about it and number two you, you don't understand how to assemble the copy that it gets in front of you know the people it needs to be the eyeballs it needs to be in front of basically yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's exactly right. And I find that myself, I've always loved writing, uh, creative writing, um, you know, literature, all that sort of stuff. But when it comes to copywriting, mm -hmm. it's a whole skill set. And people forget that, that the skill in being able to transcend what your business is about into copy and turning that copy into an irresistible offer for your brand in how that builds it I've just um, gone through this process myself with my website and and because I've changed slightly direction for my business and having somebody take what was in my brain and put it into copy is the most amazing feeling I have had when it comes to building my brand so you know today we want to talk about writing for your business of course and and you want to talk about you know how a small business owner can take control of that and there are ways for them to explore what that looks like. And I want them to understand that copywriting is a skill, but one that is learned, but one that you need to go to the right people to get the right advice because it really is um, something that can change your business. So when you say that anyone can write, is that true? Surely not everyone can write? Or what do you think? What have you found with dealing with your um, clients or just over the years when it comes to writing for a small business? How does that work? Yeah, I mean, I think if I had a dollar for every single client that said to me, Jane, I can't write. I was terrible at writing at school. Then I'd, you know, I'd have my house on the beach by now. I'd, you know, I'd be a multimillionaire. Um, people believe, it's a story they tell themselves that they can't write. And I think when you think about writing, you do think about school and, and essays, you had to write compositions. Um, that's not the sort of writing we're talking about. We're talking about writing to your ideal client. Um, you're, not, you're not really necessarily talking about yourself in your business. You're talking about your clients, your customers, these people you want to serve, that you're so passionate about solving their problems. So from that point of view, I can't remember, someone famous um, said, copy is not written, it's assembled. Mm. 
So there's a very important structure that you follow um, for copywriting different types of copy. You know, if you've got your, your homepage on your um, website, you've got email uh, newsletters, marketing email, you've got captions. All these things should follow a particular structure. Um, some can be looser than others, I would say. But what's important through them all is clarity and cutting through the confusion of all the messages out there and keeping it really simple yet powerful. Um, so I believe, I do believe anyone can write copy if you follow a, a certain type of structure and have the tools and templates to help you. Yeah. But there's never any harm in writing your copy, pouring out your heart about your business and then having someone review it for you, someone that, you know, understands the structure. You know, the, to me, that's like a perfect marriage for copy. It's having the business owner write everything, you know, write the true emotions, feelings, passion about the business. And then you have someone come along and say, slot that in there, slot that in there. And there you go. You've got the personality packed copy that's going to, you know, talk to your ideal clients. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And that's what I did because... I can, as I said, I can write or, or even as you said, like a small business owner, putting everything that they feel about their clients in their business and, and having that voice, but not being able to assemble it in a way that feels. Um, and as you also, we forget each different medium has a different way of having copy assembled doesn't it? Because your email is talking to a completely different way than a blog post would be, or talking about your website with your above the fold, below the fold, your homepage, your about page. So uh, that's what I found the difference was, like you just said, having it poured out and giving it to a professional to assemble it in a way. When you get it back, you are so surprised. It sounds like you but better, if that makes sense. And I've never had that experience of having it sound exactly like me, but written in a way that makes more sense to the person reading it. Is that what you find too? Because that's what that was a, an eye opener for me and how you can actually work together with the copywriter. I thought it had to be all one way, but yeah. having that collaboration is amazing. Okay. Yeah, and that's a really relatively new way of working that I've found over the last sort of 12 to 18 months business owners have been far more open to that and haven't and wanting to take a bigger part in, in the journey of the copywriting I think traditionally copy was very much about you're given a brief you're given your keywords um you go away and write it you know and that can work for some businesses that can work you know businesses are time poor and they are not in business to write copy um, but definitely with the market that I like to work with, people are so passionate about their business and they want to have that real input. Um, but again, they struggle with the technical side of it and the structure. Yeah. Um, and, 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 yeah, and breaking it, making it really, really simple. I think everybody thinks there has to be so much information, but yeah, I, um, you know, simple is best when it comes to copy. Like, yeah. A hundred percent, because I think the problem that people have is they do, they want to, well, firstly, I found people want to talk about themselves too much and not about their ideal client and their ideal client's problem and how you can solve it. That's number one I've found. Um, and I've been guilty of that myself and working around it. Uh, but it's also coming down to knowing your ideal client and that I... I find that blocks most people because they're not clear on that, which is why we do a lot of work. My main focus on coaching is ideal client, knowing your own vision, mission, core values, so you can work out what sort of uh, customer works best and is aligned. And then once you know all that, isn't it easier then to create content to talk to that person, that, that one person, because you know what it is you're trying to say? Absolutely. And that so many clients don't understand their ideal, their ideal client, you know, and as part of them, um, when I do work with a client, I have questions that I ask. And that's one of the questions, who are your ideal clients beyond age, income, suburb, you know, how do they feel? What are their, what are they Googling at two in the morning? What, you know, what are they really passionate about? Um, understanding their real, um, yeah, their values, your clients' values. And then you can, you know, get emotional with the copy. We make, as you know, we make decisions. Our decisions aren't rational when we buy. You know, we 
you make them emotionally and then seek to back them up with rational reasons. So that's how the copy has to work. Get in there with the emotion and then back it up with all the facts, you know, and yes, tick, 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 oh yes, yes, yes. <laughs> take, take the customer on the journey that they need to be taken on, on your, you know, on your homepage, for example. Yeah, that's it. Because you're talking to their pain point. You want to get them quickly in that scroll that they're doing on your website that they know, oh, you get me. And then you have your brand voice, which attracts, isn't it, the type of person who's aligned to you? Because you only want to attract aligned people. We're not trying to attract everyone because otherwise we're really attracting no one. So your copy, isn't it? It wants to talk to a pain point to a specific customer that is aligned with what you're about. And I think people can see that pretty quickly, but we just can't, as business owners, get out of our own way. We get into our head. We get into, uh, you know, even as a marketing person, you get into your own head and you can't quite you can do it for your clients easily because you see the bigger picture but when it's yourself you get so wound back and I like to call it um, a uh, paralysis by analysis because you're like oh my gosh no this or that and then you just do nothing and I hate that so this is why I think when we're talking about small businesses and how they approach their their writing how do you think small business owners should approach writing for their business so they don't get into that trap of being paralyzed by you know what are people going to think or I'm no good at it you know what do you find you can tell your clients to to really g them up and get them ready to write their own copy Oh, goodness. So, I mean, I think it really comes down to the fact that get comfortable in your business and your genius zone. What is it that you as a business offer and deliver that, that's so unique, that's so amazing that no one else can do? Really understand that and own it. And, you know, don't, you know, yes, be aware of your competitors and what they're doing. And maybe that's how you arrive at your position in the market is to say, well, you know, if you're selling soap, for example, no one else is sending the soap in with beautiful handwritten notes. I'm going to do that. That's my unique, one of my unique selling propositions, you know. Um, get comfortable in that. Really own it. Um, and then that's kind of what you hang your content on. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. You know, okay, websites are a bit different. Your website copy is a little bit different when it comes to spelling because you it's it's more static in the sense of your website. It, you know, it's there, it, it's there, you're probably not going to change it every few weeks, although you can. So it's worth taking the time to make sure the spelling's what you want it to be. But in terms of your, you know, your emails and your um, Instagram and social media, you know, change up the spelling of some of the words, make it your language, make it your client's language. You know, that's how people will come to recognize your brand is by your own language. So get comfortable with that. Don't worry about spelling mistakes. Do not, you know, always, you know, progress is perfection when it comes to things like that. Yeah. Just do it. And when it comes to your website, um, again, just start. Start, you know, get some advice, get some tools, speak, ask for a copywriter to review it, but just start and capture the main things. Don't be afraid, you know, to, to just, start I think that's the thing and have a little structure and just start make notes and um, what lights you up why are you in business get really comfortable in your zone and your you know what makes you unique and don't be afraid just own it because you you know your business but the Instagram account next door doesn't the person out there in the coffee shop doesn't know your business but they need your business so don't don't waste time you know just just start yeah, because you are, you're providing a solution to somebody's challenge. I mean, somebody's pain point, they're up at night worrying about something that you have a solution for. So yeah. why would you not want to own that and take that on and provide as much of you in your copy as you can? Because I think your languaging, everyone tries to be so professional in their languaging, but we don't talk like that. We don't talk to our customers like that and they're not going to get a sense of who you are unless you have your own clarity around what your tone of voice is 
how you approach your own business so that you can then go and help others. And I think we do a lot of that work um, with clients. And that's why I have a workbook uh, that people can download as well that just allows them to do that work. So once you've done, you know, what's your vision for your business, your mission, your own core values, you know, what sort of avatar are you looking for from your business offering? You can take that information to a copywriter, to a social media manager, to a VA, and they know what it is you're about. It makes it so much easier for that content to all be aligned. Don't you find that once you've done the work, everything else flows because it's all based around that same voice and, and you're working in brand building at the moment to try and make sure that your clients know that copy is part of that, but there's more to it, isn't that right? Like your brand voice. Yeah, that's right. And your brand voice is a very tangible thing that you should identify and identify what it looks like in your business so that, like you say, you can pass it on to your graphic designer, your website designer, your VA. Um, and it can be as detailed. When I work with clients, we create what's called a playbook, a brand voice playbook. And that goes right down to characteristics of your brand and what that looks like in your business. Also, what it doesn't look like. So we're really clear, you know, somebody can be fun, a brand can be fun, but there's different kinds of fun, you know, there's silly fun and a bit cheeky fun and stupid fun, and then there's girly fun, um, and then there's a corporate fun. So the, the playbook seeks to identify what those attributes look like in your business. And the owner, business owners I work with can take that away. And then we go down to even specific words and language that they will use and will not use um, so that when someone's acting on their behalf, they can go back to the, the little playbook and say, oh, um, that's not a word that the, the, that's associated with this brand. We're not going to use it. You know, it's, yeah. you, know, you know, no matter how much you talk to your graphic designer, your website designer, there's always going to be um, our own perceptions as creatives. And so to have it all in the one place is just super valuable. And here, your brand voice can change as your ideal clients change. It can, you know, it will change, you know, as you evolve as a business. So I would recommend reviewing your brand voice maybe every six months to a year to make sure you're happy with it. Review the content that you've got on Instagram and your website and your blogs. Is that how you want to come across? If not, you know, tweak it, change it. Seek yeah. to be more deliberate with it. Um, and identify it so that, you know, you know what it looks like in your business. It's super important um, because then you're, it's part of identifying your ideal clients. How do they like to be spoken to? What words do they like? Um, right down to, I don't know, what sort of greetings they like in the email, you know, howdy or gray or hey you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I've read I've read articles where people have had people unsubscribe from their email list because they had hello madam or something in there, you know, thinking that they had to be professional. People are like, what is this? what I'm no one's madam so you know you're so right it can come down to your hello in your email if you are not in line with who your ideal client is and you're talking to them in a language that makes no sense you know you are leaving money on the table every day of the week so why would you not do the work in a brand voice or in your ideal client and that's why I mean as you know and most people know that listen to this podcast is that I am so passionate about making sure you have clarity in what that looks like for your business because you do not understand the importance across the rest of your marketing by having that and copywriting is part of that journey as well as everything else that you do in your marketing because they're all tactics as part of your marketing strategy and people forget they need the strategy they go straight to I need a website I need social media I need this I need that and then they're talking to nobody because they haven't done the work so I just get so passionate about telling people to at <laughs> least explore it because if you don't you are leaving money on the table every day of the week and nobody has time for that anymore you need to know who you're talking Talking to you need to know what problem you're solving and how you are going to tell them what that is and quickly and once you do that you will see a change don't you have you seen that with your clients once you've been able to do that brand voice work to do the copy for them or at least look at it for them that you've seen that difference absolutely a hundred percent my clients once they realize that their their brand voice is unique 
you can see the light bulb moment. They think everybody in their industry is the same, but absolutely no way. You know, we all need a reason to choose this coach over that coach, this marketing strategist over that marketing strategist. We need to connect and have that. And the only way to do that is to humanize your brand and be, you know, own your brand and have those attributes come out. And once my clients realize the importance of that, they're happy to use, you know, the first person on the website and say, I, you know, many people think on the website, they have to say, we talking about, because it, it does make your business look like a team and look bigger. But at the end of the day, I'm going to do business with someone, a business that I know there is a person, a living, breathing person behind. So they get so comfortable with using I on the website. Hi, I'm Jen. Welcome to my little corner of the website. Hi, I'm Nicola. Welcome to, you know, my marketing podcast. You're owning it. You are, there's so much that that says without having to say it in words, the fact that it's an I. Um, and just being able to really clarify that they, they can go all out and be fun or go all out and be nerdy or go all out and pick a topic, like something like you love dogs and whippets. You know, you can feature that in all your emails and your podcast. And that's yeah. awesome. And that's, people dismiss that and they shouldn't because it's so amazing and so powerful. I, t- I tell you the amount of, because uh, whenever somebody follows me on Instagram, I have, um, you know, a greeting that I, I write to them and just say, hey, I'm whatever. Um, and I always have five fun facts, you know, with the owner, you know, uh, addicted to chocolate chip muffins, all those sorts of things, you know, just some people. And, you know, I was voted a little bit loud at the year seven graduation, you know, so they get a sense of who I'm about. Oh my God, the amount of conversations I have had in the DMs just from that reply that I send to people I've had you know about whippets and how people love greyhounds and they're like whippets one of the ones is um you know I'm allergic to exercise in brackets yes it's a thing and people are like oh my god I love exercise how can you do that or other people are like oh my god I so get you and the amount of conversations and friends I have made on Instagram from that and the one I just had a client discovery call last week because he loved the fact that I was addicted to chocolate chip muffins from muffin break. And that was what started the conversation. And he was like, I, I feel like I get you. I need to get on a call. I was like, so be yourself. Yes. Try and be whatever that is because you don't want to attract everyone. Oh my God, if I could tell anyone the one thing, you don't want to attract everyone. That is not your goal. Your no. goal is to attract your aligned people. The world is big enough. Is big enough for everyone to have their own little slice of it. Wouldn't you say, is that something that you find that once they realize that the world opens up? Yeah. And, and you really, and then you get deeper and deeper into it, which is so good. And you, you know, you really attract the people who want to work with you and who you're happy to work with, who you love working with. Um, so many times, you know, I've, I've started to work with clients and I've thought, oh, is this, you know, are we the right fit? And um, maybe I didn't quite market that right. Uh, maybe I need to tweak that. And the more and more that I've done that, I'm attracting the type of female business owners that light me up and I'm really passionate about their businesses. And I would even work for free, but don't tell them that. <laughs> well, that's the ultimate goal, isn't it? If you are that lit up working with someone, you would do it because you love it so much, but we don't tell them that. That <laughs> is the dream is that not what we call dream clients that's what everyone's trying to get I know look we need to be sure that people understand we know it's tough out there we know people need to make money and we're not you know making it seem like everyone has to be a dream client but ultimately remember clients that are not aligned drain your energy they're more likely to take up more of your time and you are going to be wasting money on people that could be in there you could be attracting 10 for that one that is wasting all of those hours on your energetics because you'll be showing up better and happier you'll be attracting more just use that as the analogy for attracting dream clients we're not saying you know life's hoo-ha and we need you know utopia we're just saying Mm -hmm. by attracting with the energetics you're more likely to get more of the right people instead of wasting so much time on people who are going to drain you and that's how I look at it yeah, yeah, yeah. And just to go back to what you said before about the conversations and the DMs, you know, 
you have taken things that are like they're not ordinary but they're ordinary to you like liking chocolate muffins liking dogs da, da, da. Um, and people have felt comfortable enough to converse with you on that and what we always say is your conversations come before the conversions you know and when people feel they can talk to you and you're approachable you've started that conversation you know and then they might not be your client today maybe not be next month but they're going to remember you and remember that human connection and they're even going to say to someone oh I spoke to this great marketing girl the other day and if you know and if you need that and go and speak to her you know it's just all about the connection genuine connection and I'm so glad that it has turned that way I know that people say you know well, we're always on our phones etc now and but when I started marketing back in 98 you couldn't get connections directly to your clients that was not even an option you know it was an ad or a radio ad or you know you'd be lucky if you got a coupon cut out and sent back if you had an offer you know one percent conversion rate now I can have actual conversations with someone who even 18 months later might then need me and go I've been talking to her on and off for the last couple of years. And yeah, she does that. I've had people who have seen my reels where, you know, you're just being yourself or doing something. And they have then rung me and said, I, you keep coming up and I need some marketing done, but you look, I don't know, you just keep coming up. So I was like, I'll give you a call. I'm like, I'll take that. Yeah. So you've seen me as somewhat approachable and you've seen what I've said is somewhat hitting what you need. That's enough for me. And that was months later. So it's a long-term game, people. Forget about this. Oh, they're not responding to me now. They're seeing you. They're stalking you, most likely. Even if they're not responding to your DMs, they're seeing you. So mm -hmm. don't ever get down because you think they're not responding straight away. You will be surprised. And that is the winner because you know your content is planting seeds. And isn't that what we yeah. all want? Yeah, and it's consistency, like you say. Keep showing up. Um, and that's where your brand voice comes really into play because you've got that consistent um, tone and theme to always, you know, yeah, and you're going to do it nine times out of 10 because it's you and it's natural. But then you sometimes just need to pull it back and go, am I sounding like I want to sound and attracting the people I want to? But be consistent because like you say, people are watching. Mm -hmm. It's all going in. And it takes a lot for someone to physically, you know, do a like or do a comment. Not everyone that sees, you know, what you put out there will have any physical reaction in that sense of liking, but they're still seeing it and it's building a picture of you, your brand, your services, you know, and that's one of the content pillars I talk to the clients about for Instagram, build awareness, mm -hmm. build awareness of your culture, mm -hmm. tell people how they can work with you. Yeah, and you don't be shy about that. The fact is you're there for a reason. Yes, you provide value in your, you know, your stories and your emails and that you should do that. But you should also open that conversation of, look, if you, if this is you, if this is talking to you, get in contact, get in the DMs, talk to me. You know, how can I help you? That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you. So I think the more that we do that because we're scared, we don't want to be salesy, we don't want to be slimy, we don't want to like... So, of course, you're not going to pop into the DMs straight away with a, here's a link to do something with me. People will back off. We get that. Pop in a DM. If somebody's liked something you've done, hey, you know, how are you going? How's business these days in the industry you're in? You just ask questions and it opens up that, that conversation, which is why I like responding DMs with a bit more fun info so people can have a bit of a convo because life's too freaking hard at the moment. You need to have a bit of a laugh. If you're not having a laugh, then what are you doing? And if you're not being authentic with people, why are you even trying? Exactly. And and when you do, you know, when I do DM people that have like their brands or, or anything, and it, it is, or if I think someone could be a client, it's totally genuine. I'm like, yeah, how is business going? I love, I, 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 I'm just so passionate about strong brands, strong female brands. And if I see one I like, I have to contact the person. Yeah. Um, I was in a coffee shop um, in Karen Up, the new shopping centre a few weeks ago, and I was in a coffee shop and I just loved the brand that this business owner had created. So I stalked her. I found out who she was. I found her on LinkedIn and I sent her a message just to say, love what you've done. How have you done it? Like, I just was like, give me some of your brain, share it with me. Yeah. Um, but totally just because I'm passionate about it. it yeah, and also, I mean, how great is that for her? 
I mean, that just um, solidifies everything they've done. And you're building, even if they're big brands, they're still be, you're building them up because they're putting everything on the line, especially at a shopping center. Because I know I do shopping center marketing. It's mm-hmm. hard out there. So yeah. anyone that has a store in a shopping center, go support them, please. Because mm-hmm. shopping center, anyone who has taken a lease out in the shopping center deserves a pat on the back and some support because that is a big commitment. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, it's just... It's just amazing. Oh my god. Oh my god. We could talk forever, and okay. I think we probably will. So I don't. So I think the main things that we want people to know from this: you can write your copy. You. The best thing to do is put it all out there. Get mm-hmm. it all out of your brain. Put it all on a piece of paper. Then make an appointment. Go see Jen. Just say, look, this is what I've got. Yeah. What can I do with it? Get an expert to frame it to make it how it should be because believe me I've done that and it changes your life and I think the next thing after that is don't be scared don't be afraid start and get stuff out there and you'll be surprised how the growth comes from the confidence and also the feedback if you get feedback from people for something you put out you know it's right if you don't you assess and you you change as you go and then finally your brand voice is where it's at do the work yeah do the work, find your brain, your, your brain, your brand voice, use your brain, explore people who have um, expertise in this area. Like Jen has her own brand voice document. I use my brain dump sessions to get one-on-one with people to get it out of their brain onto paper, yeah. do the work. It will change how you show up in your content and your copywriting will benefit from that because you'll have clarity and and I think that that's important so where can people find you Jen after we've spoken and we've g'd them all up into getting their copy in order how can they get in um, contact with you they can find me on my website jenmcginley.com.au and I am a big lover of Instagram so I am at Jen McGinley copywriter Awesome. Awesome. And yeah, so you're doing a lot of work now with brand building and copywriting uh, has been your jam and now you're branching out into helping them build their brand. So I think that that's really important because that I think is where it's at at the moment. So I love to see you doing that for the small businesses that you're working with. Uh, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. I'm really passionate about people finding their ideal clients and it's lovely to talk to someone who's just equally as passionate because I think the more people that can really make it easy for people to get this work done, I think it's really important. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so thank you so much and um, good luck with everything going forward and I'll keep following you online and everyone hit Jen up on Insta or head to the website if you need some help now because it'll change your life. Okay. Yay! Great <laughs> to talk to you, Jen. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.